So we are here to, to, to know how we can code like Google does so with an X. So first of all, I want to present myself. Uh, my name is Diego Juliao. I am a full stack JavaScript engineer. I am a, a package Angular creator. I am the creator for ng deploy for npms also i am a quality advocate i really love themes uh, about quality unit tests and twin tests i really love them and also i am a bike traveler um i was born in venezuela but currently i live in colombia for the people that don't know though uh, where those countries are those countries are on on the top on the north or south america in this part of south america so as I mentioned before, I am the creator for NGX Deploy NPM. That is just a schematic for Angular that allows you to deploy a package to NPM with just one command. And currently it's being referenced on the Angular official documentation. Okay, so how does Google code? Um, for this, we are going to pick a Angular product that is going to be Angular, so we are going to 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 analyze how Angular is how Angular is being built. Uh, Angular has a lot of features. They have protector for end-to-end -end testing. They have forms to manage dynamical forms and complex forms. They have Angular uh, language services to manage the internationalization. They have the Angular router to navigate from one page to another page. They have Angular Universal for server-side rendering. They have HTTP, Angular Material, Animation, CLI, and so on. They have a lot of features. Um, you know that um, they are being distributed on NPM packages, and you know that because when you start up, uh, on when you look up the package the JSON of the Angular application, you are you are going to see on the dependencies all the packages that are being installed. Currently. There are 20 packages, NPM packages, that compose the Angular ecosystem. So 23 is a, is a big number. Uh, so how to manage all those packages? Um, I think the, the most immediate uh, answer would be, well, each package can have a separate repository. OK, so but what happened? Um, we know that Angular Forms and Angular Router use RxJS. So what happens if I want to, to upgrade the version? So I need to do 23 requests or 16 or all, all the packages that are only using that library. Um, it's kind of complicated to manage that kind of, for sure it's going to be a lot of complicated, super complicated. Uh, what about TypeScript? All those packages use the same version of TypeScript. And again, if I want to upgrade the version of TypeScript for the newest one, I need to do 23 pull requests, 23 code review, and 22 merge and 22 replace. It's kind of difficult to, to see that, to, to picture that. Um, let's go into see with an example how, to, how it's going to be our organization be managed if we do that approach with a separate repository. So for that, we are going to find a startup. So our startup is very simple. We are going to, uh, our startup is going to be uh, just a web page with a, form, with a form. And that form is going to manage, it's going to receive, it's going to process the VATIN number. That number, let's call it because it's very complicated to, to pronounce, uh, it, let's call it business, business ID company ID. Um, that number is just a, a number that identifies your business to the government. It's unique, uh, it's unique in your country. But we have a challenge, my dear co-founders. Um, each country manages that business number differently. For example, in Germany, um, that has that format, but in Colombia had that format. And you can see it's very, very different. And to validate that number, it's not that simple, for example, for, for example, 23 characters or 16 characters and all the numbers and, and, done, and done, no. Sometimes you need to run an algorithm to know if that number is valid or not. For example, in Colombia, you need to run the algorithm and that algorithm is going to return a number and that number needs to be equal to the last number. So 
in this in each country that number is going to be managed differently and we want to spread all across the world so we rise we found the product team that product team um, is going to manage the application that is going to be on angular and they are going to manage also the backend that is going to be on nes so each application is going to have a separate repository okay so we decide to launch on germany so we put that code to validate that business id number on each repository because they are separate and we need to validate that on the formulary and we need to validate that on the endpoint of the backend so we just, we put the same code on the web and the backend so we decide to spam or market to friends so we need to do again two per requests to put the the validation code for friends the algorithm to in the web and the backend but our company is super success and we, we decide to rise to fund the internal tools team that is going to manage the back office team that is going to be used by the call center and we decide to do it on react because the back office is very simple it's not that complicated react perfectly fits our needs and we do the same thing we create a repository for the back office and, a, and another repository for the back end of the back office uh, in, on separate repositories so we need to copy and paste the code that we use on on the web on the back end on this new repository so right now we have our code on four repositories so we decide to launch to open our market to Colombia and uh, we need to do four pull requests but this time my, my friends is going to be a little bit more complex because we have two separate teams and they need to coordinate the launch to be ready to, to, to the Colombian market so they need to communicate each other they need to align their their dialogues to launch this uh, feature we continue working and we found that we, in our library validation we have a bug on Germany because the with the last number ends with an zero something get wrong so we 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 make an investigation and yes, we have a bug on our library. So we need to do four pull requests to fix that. And we know that it's so complicated to manage four pull requests this time something happened on the need validation. But so we decide to do something smart. We decide to extract that library, that validation, the business validation on a package. On a library so we decide to create another library another repository for our library and each repository is going to use that library but something happened we decide to open to the japanese market and yes this time only we need to touch some one library to put that code we we are now being dry we are not repeating ourselves that is very good but we still need to need to do four pull requests to create that validation number library to have that feature. Again, our four pull requests and uh, the both themes need to be coordinated to, to reach that or to accomplish that feature at the same time. And imagine our admin company in five years, how they are going to, to, to look. We are going to be on a lot of countries, and um, maybe those countries. Uh, we are going to find bugs and our application or organization is not that simple for only for repository maybe we have dozens of repository for our applications and dozens of libraries so it's kind of complicated kind of kind of complex um, to manage the pull requests uh, to create the version of the packages and uh, we only not going to have one part one library that is uh, being used across the, the organization, maybe we're going to have several. So that managing is going to be management is going to be complicated, complex. Um, what are the main problems of this approach? Uh, it's very hard to maintain. The scalability is not that nice. We have problems of scalability. Organization cannot cannot escalate so quickly. 
we also lose agility because both teams or several teams need to coordinate to accomplish something and a new feature for the organization. And we are not producing the code. If we, if we do the approach of the library, yes, we are using it, but without it, we are not producing the code. We are repeating ourselves. We have a solution for this that is called Monorepo. A Monorepo is just a software development strategy where the code for many projects are being stored in the same repository. And this is the strategy that Google is taking. And not only Google, Airbnb, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, and, and Uber. Um, a lot of big companies use this approach to manage their organizations. So let's back to the Angular example. If we go to the, um, to the source code and we go to the package folder, we are going to find something very interesting. We're going to find the 23 or more packages that compose the Angular ecosystem. So Angular is being built using a monorepo. So if we refactor our organization or a startup or Agme organization, to a monorepo would be something like this. We're going to have all the applications, the four applications that we have, in a single repository, we create a library and we import that library. So each time that we change something on, on that library, all the organizations that are important, all the applications that use that library are going to have that change right away. So what are the advantages of this approach? We can use, uh, we can, it's a lot easier to reuse the code. We can make cross project changes very easily, and the collaboration across teams is, is less complicated. Also, we can refactor organization uh, in a very large scale. So here is when NX comes in. So what is NX? NX is just uh, extensive dev tools for more repos. So in non-place English, that is just a set of scripts, set of tools that helps you to manage your monorepo. So who found NX? NX was found for these characters, these persons, that both of them work on, used to work on, on, on Google, on the Angular team. So they decided to, to create a um, consulting company. And each company that they came to help, they discovered that they need the same thing. So that is why they, they, say, they decide to, to, to create NX. And NX use more tools like Angular, React, Nest, and Node.js. So if you, are, if you have an X, you can manage those applications with that technologies. And also for the development, you have TypeScript, yes, for the unit test, Cypress for the end-to-end -end testing, and Prettier to format your code. Um, and X is super simple. We are going to have in there only applications and libraries. And with just one command, we can create an application of Angular. All the configuration is going to be ready. It's going to be right away. It's going to be available with just one command. So also we can create a React application with just one command that is going to be on TypeScript. And all the end-to-end -end testing configuration, all the unit test testing, all the builds uh, is going to be, they are going to have scripts already for that. So you, you don't need to manage that or, or worry about it. Also, we can use Nest.js at the backend or a simple node application with Express. With the library, it's the same thing. We can create Angular packages or Angular libraries, React libraries, or TypeScript libraries. We have something super, super nice on NX. We have the dependency graph. So on the dependency graph, we can have a, a picture an image of our organization. How are the, what are the, the boxes are the applications and the, the circles are the libraries. So we know how they are going to import who application, which application is, in, is using what library. So for organization, uh, the Agme company for the business ID is very simple. So we can picture very easily how it's, it's been built. But for example, what happens if our application is more, a little bit more complicated or use something more advanced or is really complicated? 
And this graph helps you to, to know which application use what, what package. Also, we have something that is very, very useful, is the affected. We can, if we introduce a change, we, we, with the, we run the affected dependency graph, and we know what applications are being affected with that change. For example, here we've, we changed something on the back office application, the front back office application, and we run the dependency graph, and we see how, or is being highlighted on red, how, what, what part of organization was modified. And for example, what happens if we change uh, the need validation? It's going to be affected, it's going to affect that change all the organization. And also, we can run the lint only for the affected, the test only for the affected, the build, and the end-to-end. -end. And this is a, a super nice feature, especially if you have continuous integration. Because, some, uh, because let's imagine if you change just a typo on, on Angular. And we need to run all the 23 tests for that, all the 23 build, or any, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of wasting time on, on and also it's going to be super, super, super late, the, the analysis. Um, with that, we only run the affected applications. And who is using NX? NX, according to the official web page, is being used by a lot of big companies like Audi, Cisco, FedEx, Microsoft, and Red Hat. Um, maybe you are wondering, do I need a large project to use NX? So the answer is no. You don't need to, to have a super complex uh, application organization to use NX. It works perfectly fine on, on smart projects, and only, I, I think you can use NX only with excuse to have these technologies already configured. If you want to worry about how to configure Cypress on your Angular application, you can use NX to create just one application and have one application with Cypress already configured. So where can I learn NX? You can learn NX I would recommend to go directly to the web page, to the official web page. They have uh, a special web page that is called resources that they have uh, at the top a very interesting video that you can learn NX in 10 minutes. And really, is, they are not lying. You, it's very simple NX, and all, you only take 10 minutes to know how it's working. Um, also, they have a tutorial on the official web page. And they are going to guide you step by step how, for example, create a workspace, how create a library, how create a, an application. And at the end of each lesson, you have a, a quiz to test yourself. Or if you want something more advanced, you can buy a course on NX Playbook. So Diego, you are only mentioned here TypeScript and JavaScript technologies. What happens if, for example, I have a backend on Python because Python fits my needs and, and I don't just fit, it's just perfect. Python is just perfect. So according to NX blog, they're going to integrate Basil. And with that integration, with that feature on NX, you can use any program language that you want. So as a conclusion, my friends, Monorepo is just a repository with all your projects. You, with that, you can reuse your, your code through the, your organization. We can make cross-project changes a lot easier and is a lot easier to maintain. And NX is an extension of tools for Monorepos that you can create libraries and projects. And you can run a scripts only for the affected to, to run to know what are, what are the applications that are being affected. And it's only for TypeScript now. And thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs>